The school bell rang. Lunch was over. A young bony face with ghostly white skin, looking like a grim reaper, was hiding in, was hiding in the crowd as he headed towards building 12. The teacher who spotted him saw that his soulless, uh, soulless sunken eyes behind thick square glasses were watching the students like a vulture. Who was this boy? Was he really a student here? He looks familiar, but he seems too old for high school. This teacher didn't call a code red because his job was to report suspicious behavior, not act like an undercover cop. Students paid him no mind. They were just relieved to get out of the Florida heat and into some air conditioning. Once in class, they sat there like a corpse with blank expressions and lifeless eyes, hearing the dry, empty voice of their teacher giving an endless lecture. It somehow made the tick, tick, ticking of the old clock above the Promethean board move slower and sound louder, letting them know that it would be hours before they could enjoy the rest of their Valentine's Day outside the classroom. Eyelids were getting heavy. Minds were fading. Drool was hanging on the corner of their lips. Their arms held up their heads with little success. Their legs were shaking them awake. The lights abo buzzed above their heads. The teacher, ch, ch boom. What was that? Ch, ch boom. Was it the why was the fire alarm ringing? Wasn't there already a drill? Ch, ch boom. Something's wrong. Lock the door. Turn off the lights. Everyone hide. San Diego, February. Walmart was not far from my house. It would have taken uh, five minutes to get there if the police hadn't stopped to question me. Two officers had me sit on the sidewalk, hands on their gun, as they examined my ID. Most people would have been irritated, being questioned for no reason, but I knew how cops get, so I kept my composure. In the end, they apologized for the misunderstanding, saying they were looking for a suspicious uh, uh, suspect with blonde hair who committed an assault at Balboa Park. A suspect with blonde hair? That sounded like a white person to me. Not someone who bleached his hair. So why was I being questioned? Simple. For the same reason why my classmates joked about be me being in a gang. Why my mom always says I'm reaching for my wallet to the po cop pulling her over. Why someone called the police on my brother for looking in my mom's car for her cell phone. Because I had the audacity of being black in a nice neighborhood, I was, as punishment, I was forced to be called someone I was forced to be someone they call suspicious. I grew up biracial, so there were times my, where my mom felt like she needed to lecture me about what it means to be black in this country. But it's not like I didn't learn from experience. The cops who questioned me were just another day. Eventually, so did learning about mass shootings. Back in October, Mr. Schneck, our, our U.S. history teacher, had us read an article about the shooting in Las Vegas that killed 61 people and ki injured over 800 more. This morning, we were reading about the Parkland shooting. It was a scary thought, a neo-Nazi like Nicholas Cruz easily getting his hands on a gun and using it to kill 17 students. It could happen anywhere at any time. It wasn't just Parkland, it was Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook, Columbine. What if we were next? I knew I had the best chance of being next since I was the only one of the only black students in our class. Every mass shooting is a tragedy, but gun violence was no stranger to black people. A racist only needs a reason to pull the trigger, even if that reason is seeing an invisible gun. If I had given a reason to, any reason at all, then those cops near Walmart would have shot me too. I kept such opinions to myself because I knew how people, what would people say. Here we go again. Someone gotta play the race card. Someone got, stop making this about race. This isn't about you. Quit starting a race war with everybody. Parkland, February. Armed with an AR-14 and brandishing swastikas, the devil strolled down the hall looking for more prey. Some students stuff were stuffed in a closet like a coffin, their hearts stopping as they heard the sound of footsteps getting louder and louder. Everyone in Ms. Seamus' Holocaust class tried their best to keep quiet. There were no hard corners to hide behind, but the doors were locked, so he couldn't get in. They must be safe, right? Ch -ch Boom. Shattered glass. Bleeding chest. Screams. Ch -ch Boom. Two dead. Five more bleeding. Tears ran down young faces. No one knew what to do. He didn't know who he was shooting at. He just wanted them all dead. San Diego. March. It's always been as... It's been almost been a month since the Parkland shooting. 
and word got around that on the anniversary, there's going to be a 17-minute walkout in honor of the 17 students who died in Parkland. We were young, in inexperienced, but not naive. 17 was the age we became butterflies. We were just as old as David Hogg, Emma Gonzalez, and all the other uh, Parkland survivors who were fighting against gun violence. We knew the issue was getting worse, and we were, de we were ready to fight, protest it. But there were people like our principal who were determined to treat us like children just because we were not officially adults yet. He had the entire senior class, all 30 of us, meet in the English classroom during lunch to talk about the walkout. He told us that we had our First Amendment rights and there was no way for him to stop us from walking out. The worst he could do was mark us truant for not being in class. However, he wanted to express concerns about us leaving campus and off or offer an alternative solution. He wanted us to, instead of marching to City College with the other high schoolers, to have a smaller protest out on the baseball field. The class tried to reason with him, saying that it neglected the purpose of the walkout. I hear what you're saying, he replied, without raising his voice. But tr please try to understand where I'm coming from. When you're in class, we can protect you. But if you're out there and things get violent, we won't be able to protect you. You're safer in school than you are out there. Parkland, February. Ch -ch boom. Ch -ch boom. Two dead. Both teachers rolled down. Two bodies. Both teachers rolled down the stairway. The haunting screams could be heard echoing throughout the building. Students were tearfully stayed quiet as they hid from the devil, wondering who was dead. Ch -ch boom. Where he was. Ch -ch boom. If their friends were okay if they'll be okay, or this was the day they and everyone they know will die. <laughs> Boom. Were they ever going to see their parents again? Were they going to come home at all? Why must they be naked in a war zone? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Where are the police? God, oh God, someone make it stop. Anyone. <laughs> Boom. San Diego, March. There were times when I would have stood up for the principal. I was a vice president president for our school council and he was often in our readings. I like to think that it gave me a unique perspective of who he was compared to the students who were already a preju prejudiced against him. By the sound of it, he wasn't trying to discourage us from being vocal about the issue. He was just concerned about our sa safety since politics has become violent nowadays. Quietly, I tried to come up with a defense, but he made it harder for me at the more he argued. Soon all I heard was, we can protect you, we can protect you, we can protect you. And it made me want to shout, no, you can't. I'm not safe from being shot by a cop outside of school. I'm not safe from being shot by the next Nicholas Cruz in school. No one can protect me. That's literally the problem. My patience was already dying, but he had the audacity to say, I understand that, but I'm asking you to trust me on this. You guys are too young to understand this, but things are a lot different out there than they are in here. I don't think you should put yourself at risk for a cause you don't fully understand. But we won't be—we won't even be going for the whole afternoon, a student argued. The walkout is only supposed to be for 17 minutes to honor the 17 students that, that were taken. Yes, but that's 17 minutes you could be in class. Everyone was stunned and silent. Even our English teacher was taken back by the comment. He ended the conversation by saying we should do whatever feels right when the time comes, but he hoped that we'll make the smart choice. He left our, when he left, our English teacher was the first to speak. She apologized that we had to listen to all that. Then we went around the room talking about what he told us. Not a lot of us defended him. Walking home, I saw the police cars and thought, the, the passing police cars and thought, what if, I, what if one of them stops and question, aggressively questions me? I was already irritated. I probably would have raised my voice, giving them a reason to pull the trigger. If I was a ghost unseen by the living, watching my classmates settle for a smaller protest out in the ba baseball field, instead of loud in the streets fighting for my justice, how would I feel? Probably the same way the, Parkland, the kids from Parkland would have felt if we didn't take a stand. Fuck my principal. I already made, planned to walk out and I wasn't going to let him change my mind. When I got home, I made a sign so heavy that it made my arm sore, clearing it outside the class. If 
I lifted it proudly as we marched to City College. Our school was, a small, our school was small, only 100 students, eight teachers, and two buildings. Our group that, that joined the walkout was the smallest, but our determination was strong. Nothing was going to stop us. Something I will never forget that day was hearing a black woman reminding the crowd that fighting for gun control isn't just about fighting mass shootings, it's also about fighting police shootings. I was taken back by it because the crowd, even those in my class, cheered in support and it made me think to myself, if I can be local about this issue without being afraid, maybe I can be vocal about race too.